cytoskeleton. This session will focus on microtubules present in cilia and flagella and how these microtubules aid in the movement of the cilia and the flagella. So let us look at the learning outcomes of this session. Cilia and flagella are membrane extensions. That means you will find that the membrane is actually extended, extending out to form cilia and flagella. The lengths of the two being different, flagella are longer than the cilia. And these cilia and flagella are extensions that can beat, beat, that means move to propel cells at velocities of about one millimeter per second. The swimming of the sperms is also due to such a beating. Cilia and flagella being structurally the same differ in their number and size and both have a 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules which originate from microtubule organizing centers that in turn have a 9 plus 0 arrangement. The flagellar dynans, these are the molecular motors that are associated with the microtubules in cilia and flagella. Uh, they are responsible for bending the flagella and the cilia to enable these to move. The dynins slide adjacent microtubules to enable bending. The effect of power stroke. The word power comes from the fact that the molecular motors have a ATPase domain which is able to not just bind to ATP but also hydrolyze ATP to release energy and that energy can be used to carry out mechanical work. And this effect of power stroke of each of the dynans simultaneously coordinates the rhythmic movement of the flagella and the cilia. This is essential because as a whole, when all of them move in the same direction, it is enabling this, the, the entire cell to move or entire cell to propel. Now here are certain movements that one associates with cilia and the flagella. So as you can see over here, the cilia are particularly uh, short extensions and you can see how when it pushes the surrounding over here, it is basically propelling the cell forward. So uh, effectively what you see is this movement that it makes is the power stroke and when it comes back, as you can see when it comes back, that is what is called as a recovery stroke. So both flagella and the cilia are able to carry out what is called as power stroke and recovery stroke. And because of this alternating power stroke and recovering stroke, you have movement happening. As you can see over here, the flagella that is present at the end of the sperm is also able to undulate in a certain function in a, in a whip-like pattern. So it goes like that. And because of that, you can see how the entire sperm is moving forward or it is being propelled forward because of the movement of the flagella per se. The other um, you know, kind of movement that is associated with how the cilia and the flagella function, here as you can see, this kind of is a breaststroke movement that is observed in swimming. This is what is called as a corkscrew met uh, a uh, method. So you know how uh, bottles with corks, when you, when you push the screw in and then you pull it out, it comes out. So that way you can have this entire thing moving out. Then you have, of course, the way the rowing takes place. And this is how you can see that the cell is propelling forward. So these are just certain general uh, ways by which cilia and flagella are able to carry out the movement of the cell per se. That means when it moves, it is actually enabling the cell to move. If the cell is fixed, then it doesn't allow the cell to move, but it allows the surrounding aqueous medium to move because of the movement of the cilia and the flagella. So this is something that you could relate to when you are looking at, you know, the um, respiratory system, which has ciliated epithelium. So the uh, So when air blows in, you know what happens is that the flow of the air is 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 propelled because of the uh, cilia or when you have the intestines with the ciliated epithelium you know that you can have movement of the 
um, uh, fluid that is present in the lumen of the intestines being propelled because of the ciliated epithelium. So likewise, you can see how if the cell is not really moving, then, then the cilia is definitely enabling the surrounding the, uh, environment to move. Now we basically will try to look at, you know, for example, this that you see over here is several cilia, okay, that is uh, extending out. So this is the cell membrane. The cell membrane it is, itself is extending out. But within this cilia, you will have microtubules present. And these are the same that happen in flagella as well. So you can see that the flagella is much more longer than the cilia per se. But within the flagella and within the cilia, you have microtubules present. In a particular arrangement, we will just see in a while. Now, this originates from basal bodies or what we call as uh, microtubule originating centers. Now, these are typically 9 plus 0 in their arrangement of microtubules, while these have a 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules. So, uh, effectively, we are going to look at, you know, how from the basal body you have the entire uh, cilia or the flagella being formed. So, this over here, which is the basal body, if you take a cross section of this basal body, you can immediately see what is called as the pinwheel-like structure, where you have a set of microtubules. So you have three microtubules, A, B, and C, forming one triplet set. And like that, you have nine triplet cell sets forming what is called as a pinwheel structure. So this is what we call as a nine plus zero. The zero is because at the center, you do not have any microtubule set present. And so this is what is called as the 9 plus 0 arrangement. It is typical of uh, microtubule organizing centers, whether you take centrosomes, okay, or whether you take basal bodies that are uh, present at the base of the cilia and the flagella. Now, interestingly, uh, from this, you will find that you have the microtubules being originated, and you have a region which is called as the transition zone. And... Uh, you can see how the membrane, plasma membrane, is what is getting extended, okay? And uh, this extension, within the extended membrane, you would have the entire uh, cilia structure or the microtubule structure. So this entire structure that is formed is what is called as axoneme. So this over here is the 9 plus 0 primary structure, as you can see over here, okay? What we are basically trying to say is from the 9 plus 0, in this case the 9 uh, is triplets, but the primary structure that is formed is uh, 9 plus 0. But here, look at the difference. The microtubules are not in a set of 3, but it is a doublet. So it's not triplets, it is each one of them is a doublet. So here in the 9 plus 2 arrangement that you have eventually in the cilia and the flagella, the microtubule sets are doublets and they're not triplets, but in the basal body per se, the microtubule sets are triplets. So there is a structural variation that happens as it goes from the basal body to forming the uh, cilia and the flagella. Uh, a more elaborate structure uh, reveals that apart from the nine doublet microtubules at the center, you have a uh, a set of two microtubules connected to each other and in fact all these nine doublets are associated with the central uh, two microtubules through what is called as radial spokes. We will look at the structure a little more in detail. So yes this is an electron microscopic uh, picture of a typical cilia uh, cross section or a flagella cross section and as you can see over here there are nine doublet microtubules with a central, uh, uh, you know, pair of uh, complete microtubules being present. Uh, when you look at this with a, on a higher resolution, you can see how very clearly every doublet is made up of two uh, microtubules, but one microtubule is complete. This is a microtubule and the other microtubule is incomplete, which means that this is the complete microtubule is made up of 13 protofilaments, while the incomplete one is made up of 11 protofilaments. So, 
uh, the schematic structure. Therefore, uh, let us understand the schematic structure. So the outer gray lining that you see is nothing but the membrane because uh, the final uh, covering of the flagella and the cilia is ultimately the plasma membrane. Uh, but what you have internally as the entire structure, this is what is called as the axoneme. Okay, and now we go into a little detailed understanding of what this exoneme is made up of. So as you can see, at the periphery, you will find that there are the nine doublets and each doublet contains two microtubules with one microtubule, which is the A microtubule, is 13 protofilaments and is complete. While the second uh, microtubule, which is the B1, is incomplete, it has a11 microtubules and two are being shared with the A microtubule. So every doublet that is present is present in this form. The single uh, uh, central pair, uh, you know, both the microtubules are complete microtubules and they are singlets. So uh, the two of these are connected to each other through proteins, okay, specific proteins, and so they are connected over here. While you would observe very clearly that from the complete microtubule, that is microtubule A, you have a set of dynins extending out to the B microtubule of the next. So, from A, it is extending to B over here. From A, it is extending to B over here. So, likewise, you will find that every time these dynins that are extending, so these are called as the outer dynin arms. And these are what is called as the inner dynin arms and they are basically pointing towards the uh, B part of the microtubule preceding it. Now interestingly every doublet is connected to each other through a protein that is called as nexin. So the blue that you see is a connecting protein and that is what is nexin. While the two uh, sheets uh, two central single microtubules in itself is covered by a, a complex protein structure which is called as the inner sheath. And of course, as you can see from the microtubules, you have what is called as proteins comprising radial spoke. And these radial spokes bind to the inner sheath. Okay, uh, so this is something which is a very typical cross section of a cilia and a flagella as you can see it is very elaborate and so the molecular mechanism that enables the movement is due to all of these complex proteins working in tandem together to carry out bending of the cilia and the flagella in order to have the whip like movement of the cilia and the flagella. So here is what you can see this is the uh, dynins. So, uh, we all know that the dynins are made up of uh, uh, several polypeptides with two heavy poly polypeptides and, and, and you have the globular heads, the ring-like structure, which is nothing but uh, each subunit of this is belonging to a family of proteins called triple A plus ATPase family. So, each of the subunits of this ring is able to bind to ATP and hydrolyze it. So, you can see that it has a molecular motor domain, so it is able to function as a motor. That means it is able to convert chemical energy into mechanical energy. And you can see that the dynins have these regions which are able to bind to the next microtubule. So this is one microtubule and this can bind to the second microtubule. So we know there are nine microtubules sets, so one set can bind to the other set through these microtubule binding regions. So these are how, this is how you will find that the dynins are arranged, okay. So if you have two uh, microtubule sets, that is doublets, we all know that from the basal body, uh, you have the microtubules growing at the plus end. So it is only going to grow like this, right. And you can see that every two doublet is associated with each other through the dynins and we very know uh, we very very clearly know that the a microtubule is extending its inner dynins and outer dynins to the b microtubule of the next doublet now 
Also, what is very clearly understood is that um, the dynons are minus directed molecular motors. So, effectively, these are going to move in the minus direction while it is going to push the uh, microtubule towards the plus side. So, you can see how one microtubule is sliding against the other and that sliding is thanks to these dynons. Now, suppose you consider the flagella part of the sperm. Okay. So, here what you can very clearly see is that there is an undulating movement. Now, you can understand that these nexons are linking the microtubules and you can see that due to the power stroke, the dynons are moving the moving one of the microtubules. So, you can see how this microtubule is moving, right? But because it is connected to these nexons, okay, the nexons are not letting go of one microtubule from the other. So, there is always going to be a connect between all the nine doublets of the microtubule and so essentially what is understood is this nexon okay is holding on to the two microtubules but this dynon is through a power stroke okay pushing one of the microtubules down and the other microtubule is moving up therefore but you can see that they are still connected with the nexon being stretched out so it is a relatively flexible molecule which can stretch out as and when the two sets of microtubules which are closest to each other are moving with respect to each other and that movement is happening because of the power stroke of the dime. So this is exactly what you are trying to see with this. So effectively when all the nine sets of microtubules work in tandem, okay, then you can see how the sliding of these microtubules pushes the cilia towards this. Now, so suppose slowly, gradually, these microtubules start, you know, uh, growing like this and these go back, okay, then you will have this moving this way. So, therefore, this is the relaxed state. It can go this way. It can come back to this state. It can go like this. So, therefore, you can see how you have a whip here and then you have a whip over here. So, it moves in both, it bends in both the directions and because it is bending in both the direction, there is a movement of the entire flagella or the cilia by way of which it is propelling the cell per se. So, let us make the conclusions. The cilia and flagella are made up of nine sets of microtubule doublets in the periphery with a central pair of microtubules within a central sheath. The microtubule doublets is made up of a complete microtubule A and an incomplete microtubule B with each of these doublets linked to each other through a linking protein and we know that that is nexin. The ciliary and the flagellar dynons are bound to the A microtubule of a doublet and point towards a B microtubule on an adjacent doublet. The dynons enable sliding of the adjacent doublet towards its minus end leading to a bend that makes the motility. Dynons can take forward as well as backward steps. The phi cilia and flagella with its microtubules and dynons are therefore able to, through a molecular mechanistic, enable the movement that can either lead the surrounding to move or for the cell itself to get propelled and move. Thank you.